Hi everyone, I'm thrilled to be here and a bit nervous as well. So can you please switch the slide? Awesome. So I'm going to talk about the good, the bad and the ugly for us I experienced in the last month's learning rest. Does anyone actually know the movie? Hands up. Oh, awesome. <laughs> nice. A lot of people. So who am I? My name's Claudia. I'm a software engineer working with C Sharp in Switzerland in a big engineering company called Silke. So why did I learn Rust? How come that I learned Rust at all? So it's kind of a funny story. A friend of mine asked me to write a proposal for the Rust Fest. And I don't know any Rust at all. Never. Actually, I heard about Rust just doing my studying like five years ago, hearing about the memory safety of Rust, but nothing more, and not really looking into it. Also, in the C Sharp world, you actually hear about Rust with WebAssembly. C Sharp and WebAssembly are getting a thing, and a lot of examples are actually with Rust. So I thought to myself, it, it would be fun to talk at RustFest and writing a proposal. Not a lot of pressure at all, <laughs> but I mean, they're not going to take me anyway, so let's let just try it. And they did. So I felt like this guy, Eagle Eyes from the movie, you know, the pity is when I'm paid, I always follow my job through. So that was a month ago, and I started to learn Rust. So I'm going to talk about my journey, the good, the bad, and the ugly. Here you can see some kind of motivational chart. In the beginning, it's awesome. Like, I can learn a new language. I can learn Rust. It was a really great time. And then you can see the first bump. That was an experience with tooling I'm going to tell you about. The second bump here is actually WebAssembly. And the last one where I hit rock bottom was JavaScript. So that's how it started. Like Blondie, Clint Eastwood said, the way back to town is only 70 miles. So if you save your breath, I feel a man like you can manage it. Adios. So Clint Eastwood, the handsome guy here, is the good guy in the movie. And that was like Rust for me as well. I started learning Rust with the Rust Lang page and some YouTube tutorials just to get to know the types and the differences to C-sharp as well. And some parts that I really enjoyed is first, I found it really easy to read Rust itself. Just if you know some programming languages, you can look at it and you can somehow read it. I haven't looked at all at macros yet, so I heard some rumors there. Crates and structs is something I really enjoyed because I come from the object-oriented world, so I could use a lot of the same series there. Also, the syntax of array slicing, you know, the dot dot you can use. I really enjoy that syntax. C Sharp got that, like, I think at the last language update with array index to use that syntax and I was happy to see it here. And I think my favorite part of the language was the loop statement. So this is the first language ever that I saw you actually have a statement for loop and you don't have to write while true. And it just saves some time and that anyone thought about it and did it, I think that's really awesome. <laughs> So, some, 
stuff that I found a bit weird first the snake case. <laughs> I'm used to camel case and pascal case. I will get used to it. And then the return statement. At, first, at the first examples, I just saw like return one semicolon, like every other language. And then I saw you can actually just write one. And it does the same. It returns one. So I was asking myself, why does Rust have that? Why, why does it do it? And I was confused at the start. Now I know actually that um, it just returns the last statement every time. And I like it. I just use the faster thing, so it's nice. And then the ownership and the borrowing. It's a new concept for me. So I somehow found it hard. It's a very steep learning curve, but it's, I think, one of the most important parts of Rust because of the memory safety. But I still have a lot to learn here. So the tooling. Here you can see Lee Van Cleef, the bad guy. But not everything is bad, like with Lee Van Cleef as well. So I will start with the parts I enjoyed. For me, the tooling is like a friend. So I'll sleep better. My good friend is by my side to protect me. I used Visual Studio Code, as you can see from the icon, as an IDE. Oh, also something to mention. I work with Windows and not with Linux. So I think Visual Studio Code is one of the like eight preferred IDEs to use if you work with Rust. And I used Cargo as a package manager. And also, after some time, I realized, um, how do I format my code? I want to have some how a possibility to format, so I installed Rust format. And I was confused that it doesn't come with RLS. So, another part of the tooling are the error messages from the compiler. So, everyone I talked with about praised like the compiler messages from Rust. So, my expectations were up there about seeing the warnings and the error messages. And then I happened to encounter this. So, as you can see, the message is on, not on the correct line. It's on the start of my implementation. And also the expected and the found wasn't that much helping. <laughs> that was a bit of a letdown, maybe because my expectations were so high. But most of the time, they were very helpful. So what was the bad part of my experience of the tooling? You remember from my motivational chart, the first bump, that was here. So like, God's not our, our side because he hates idiots also. And the idiot was me. I don't know if you recognize the icon, it's Visual Studio. So I set up my tooling with Visual Studio code and it worked perfectly fine. And I was like, why shouldn't it work with Visual Studio as well? Let's try it. So some guy actually wrote an extension for Visual Studio to work with Rust some years ago for an old Visual Studio version. And I tried it out. So I installed it and started Visual Studio and it didn't work. I googled and some guys found, hey, let's deinstall the RLS. If you start Visual Studio, it will prompt you to install it. It didn't. So that was like the low point and I said to myself, yeah, it won't work. I'm kind of an idiot trying it out with like an earlier Visual Studio version. So it was like for 2018 and I used, or 17, and I used 2019. So then I got back to Visual Studio Code, 
and everything was broken. I had to deinstall Rust format and RLS and install it all again. But in the end, it worked, and I'm happy with Visual Studio Code. Don't try it. <laughs> so then I began my journey. I looked at the language, the types, structs, and traits, and wanted to start a new project with WebAssembly. So I saw this awesome GitHub page for Rust and WebAssembly with a tutorial called Game of Life, which I followed like for the first quarter. I used Wasm pack to generate my WebAssembly package from Rust, which is really awesome. It hot reloads your web page if you change your code and run Wasm pack. And it worked great and very fast as well. Then the favorite part of my Resum and Rust experience are those console error panicles. As you can see, it's just two lines of code that you have to call, and it sets a error panicle. So you can see errors directly in the web page console. So if anything fails, you can actually see a Rust message, like it failed on this line and a really good error message. That was like the first time I was really happy to see an error message. And also, I talked with some friends who used C Sharp and WebAssembly, and they don't have it. So if anything fails, they just see nothing. And the debugging with WebAssembly isn't that great yet. They're going to improve it but it's quite awful. So those things, a lifesaver. So the front end. My two last like hiccups from my emotional chart are here. You can see here Eli Wallach, the ugly guy from the movie. For me, my experience like with WebAssembly was who the hell is that? One bastard goes in and another one comes out. I started to use um, multi-threading with WebAssembly and Rust. I tried it on a normal Rust um, application to run in the console, and it worked fine. It was fairly easy, I say. And then I used it in my WebAssembly project. And Resin Pack said, awesome, we built it. Smiley face. Everything's great. Then I looked at my web page, refreshed it, and there was this error message. It cannot actually find multithreading because it's not actually yet packed to the WebAssembly package. It cannot find the module. So that didn't work. <laughs> then I had to use for my little project like the system called time. I thought, I mean, that has to work. So I called the time from Rust, packed it, everything was built perfectly with Rust and Pack, and then it built again. It also hasn't yet ported the system call. So like these bar starts, these, like the nice things from Rust that I just can't use with Rust assembly occurred one after another. <laughs> So how can you actually still use like the time that are obviously needed? It's like you can actually define it in JavaScript. Like you can see here on the bottom. And just have a function like get current time in millisecond. And then on the Rust part, you can say, hey, in that JavaScript, in that JavaScript file, this method exists. And then just call it in Rust like any other function. And beside this JavaScript call and the DOM manipulation, that's the only thing I had to do with JavaScript, which I really enjoyed. All the other functionality I could write in Rust and then call it from JavaScript. 
So that's like the first draft of my application. It worked, but it wasn't pretty. I wanted to make it nice as well. So I had at the moment like one huge Rust file with all my functionality in it. And I wanted to split it up, like have a folder universe with my whole universe from the application and the library and structs and traits. So I had to use mod and use and create to split up my modules. And that was quite hard. It was, it was harder than I expected. Also, I looked in the internet on Stack Overflow to see examples how it should be done. And some of them didn't work. Later on, I heard in 2018, it actually changed. So there are still a lot of examples that will not work. So I used more hours that than I wanted to say to make this happen. Then I, as I said, I used structs and traits, which I really enjoyed to have the inheritance that I'm used to. Also, I used a lot of generics, just to make it possible to have a functionality just written once. And this was something I missed. Something like nested structs. I, I wanted to make, like, um, inherit one struct into another. Like on the example you can see on the right. I hope to find something I like that. But there's nothing possible to do it this way. Maybe it has to have to do something with the ownership that was isn't able to do it. I don't know. So I did it, as you can see, on the left example. I just have a struct, I call it here part, that my other two structs use the fields from. Like, count is used in apartments and roads. But I wanted to have it flat. But still, in the end, I could accomplish what I wanted. So then this happened. You remember my emotional chart, the last point, where I really hit rock bottom with the JavaScript? That was this. I was like suddenly seeing a lot of red lines. I'm mean, like, I'm your friend. Please don't die, please don't die. <laughs> and it did. So what happened? It couldn't find my WebAssembly module. It's like the one called City Inc. Next. And I tried to clean it, to rebuild it, to, I don't know, do everything possible that I knew about. But I couldn't make it work again. So I used Git through my little project and thought, let's just go and commit back and see if it works there and what did I change to break it, actually. So then I realized this one. When I started my WebAssembly project, I used this comment to have a resin pack template, which was pretty neat. It had a lot of things in it before. But what it actually does, it clones this template into your www folder. So now you have a Git repository in there. And if you do not delete that .git folder, the Git directory, and you just work on your root and naively just like write git add all, git commit, and don't look at the files, you will not really realize that you haven't committed anything from your JavaScript part. So I had no history at all. I didn't know what went wrong. So I had to start again. I created a new project and copied one file after another. 
to see where did I fail, what did I do wrong. And I actually copied everything, and it worked. So if anyone knows what could happen here and what went wrong, or anyone had the same problem, please come afterwards to me and tell me what I did wrong. And delete the Git directory. So that's almost to the end. What were my key takeaways? I actually do recommend Rust. I, I love to, like the whole language part of Rust, I really loved it. And I prefer to C++, like way lot. I do want to learn more, like learn more about the whole memory concept, the ownership and the borrowing. And I do think it's quite a steep learning curve. So like a month, 66 hours, I don't think it's enough. I can now write some code in Rust, but I wouldn't say I'm like a Rust programmer. Yeah, thank you. We have time for questions. Um, going myself through a learning process here. Um, ah, <laughs> recently, I've hit some points where the documentation was either confusing or could have been better. And in some places, I just got stuck because I couldn't go any further. So. What was, in your case, one or two places where the documentation and maybe something that could have been done better to get you over the hump of understanding some concept or issue, maybe some error or something like that? I think more examples, just like more coding examples, not just a hello world would help. And also in the Stack Overflow, maybe some people can write the version for us. Oh, just as an addition, you said you didn't look into macros. Mm -hmm. That was something that I hit recently. And just as a comment, if somebody's going to do this, give an example of the macro which, does, which doesn't have a variable number of, of uh, parameters. That would be very good. <laughs> Any other questions? Not? Okay, thanks, Claudia. Thank you very much. <laughs>